a pleasure not to rush to see the sweetness here the hush freedom now from all the crush i need to have it all growing slowly growing well our lives run in parallel smiling when you're raising hail it's not like me at all learning things i never knew knowing things i learn are true certain that there's only you no shadows on the wall feeling proud when people see the way i want my life to be heaven knows it's not like me it's not like me at all watching something special grow knowing there's much more to know going where i need to go and proud to do it all saving smiles for someone who approves of everything i do planning not for one but two i need to have it all Growing stronger day by day finding that there's time to play Suddenly i found a way it's not like me at all it's simply not like me I've just changed my mind. <laughs> we won't be far away. And then about the lunch. Get you something? Linda, your boss is slightly pregnant. Is that a good or a bad thing? I'm not sure. Five years ago, I, well, I wouldn't have had it, but I'm 30. It's now or never. I just can't understand why you can't get it fixed or tell the man and get married. Mother, I don't want to marry him. Then why did you... Oh, forget it. I've read all about it in that magazine. Of How are you of going to live? Different generations, different ways of looking at things, I suppose, but... How? I saved up to travel. I can keep myself for 12 months. And then? I'll go back to work. That magazine of yours gives advice to other women. And you don't understand the first thing. Right on time. Journalist have to make deadlines. Huh? Hmm. Well, my standard speech usually runs. A lot of women have been through this before. And not one male obstetrician. Uh, I'll only be a moment. If it is urgent, 
20 minutes, if not tomorrow. You're what? Pregnant. Oh, Mr. Doherty, don't give me a hard time. You're getting married. Well? No, I don't think you'd make a suitable husband. Married already. Violent, very violent. Lots of women marry violent men. My mother did. So did my wife. What do you think you're doing? Having a baby. I'd like a year off. What, and come back to your old job? Why should I? Because I'm good at it. If you don't, I'll have an abortion until your parish priest who drove me to it. Ha! <laughs> Hold it! Talk to the boss. Promise you nothing. Matron Beatty, please call recovery board. Matron Beatty, please call recovery. <laughs> Stopping. Now, Melanie, I want an effort. Not too hard. Easy. Here we come. Oh, big shoulders, eh? Going to be a footballer. Now, watch this, nice. Bit of a turn. Gotcha. Melanie, your 12 months is up. Want to come in and talk? Uh, can you just hold the line for a moment, Mr. Doherty? Oh, John. Oh, there. There. Mm. Sorry about that. Uh, now, when, when did you want to see me? Yes, I'm, I'm sure that'll be fine. 
Okay. There's his food. He's really good about lunch and he's sleeping like a top in the afternoons. I'll come and pick him up after I've finished, okay? Goodbye, right, darling. Mm. Oh, do I look all right for Doherty? I can't tell after a year of being domestic. You look very smart. Bye. Ah, Melody Hilton. Meet Noel Deming. He'll be working with you. What else? Noel's assisting me. We're reorganizing throughout. I see. Ah, uh, Noel Deming. New York office. Was. Noel's been assistant to me the last 12 months. Assistant too? Hey, us assistants too aren't as bad as we're painted. Nice to have met you. Lunch? Fine. Melanie? We're going to change that magazine of yours. Are you going to help us? Uh, yes. I hope you and Noel can work well together. What does he know about women's magazines? He can read surveys. The readership's getting older. We're not getting to the younger people. It's always had a middle-aged readership. Melanie! Noel has achieved great results on our other publications. The new editor must be able to work with him. Uh-huh. Well, I'm sure Noel and I can work together. Good. All right, Miss King. Um, Mr. Doherty just walked in. He's with... Helen will be glad to see you. Melanie! I mean, Miss Hilton. Welcome back. I'm going to bar those damn things. Hello. You've come to take this down? I'm delighted. You want to take the helm now, or...? I've only just walked in. Well, when? Things are building up at home. I'd like to hand over pretty soon. You two work it out. Just make sure it fits in with my schedule for the magazine. Who's this Noel Denning? The happy axeman, they call him around the building. Is he why you went out fast? Frank's feeling neglected. Frank? He's the most liberated husband I've ever met. Mm. That was a load of the girls. So he's really pressuring you to give up. Melanie, I've got two young kids at home. The housekeepers turn into their mother, and I'm just the nice lady who comes home late. Mm. Julie, Melanie Hilton. She's taking over from me. Hi. She's the new cadet. Oh. <laughs> and Frank misses the kind of meal it takes three hours to cook. I've written a hundred articles on how you and your freezer can manage all that, Helen. I've written a hundred myself. I want you here at least a week on the changeover. Make that next week. Doherty only phoned me this morning. Hey, Linda, this isn't for some VIP, just a recycled editor. <laughs> a treasure. Mm. Came to relieve one week and I wouldn't let her go. Look, I'll try for Monday, but it all depends. Good. Depends on finding someone to look after Andrew. No. <laughs> no, dear. I'm not going to become little Andrew's mother for you. That wasn't what I asked, Mother. If I'm going to look after him five days a week, I'll feel like his mother. Mm -hmm. You didn't think... I'm sure I didn't say anything to make you No, think. no, we, we didn't say anything. It's just until I find someone. Who is going to look after another woman's baby? Well, there are some women who'd be grateful for the work. Work's all it'd be to them. You should be with your own baby. Surely you want to be. But it's out of the question. Why? Because we can't live on nothing, Mother. I've got to earn enough for the both of us. You're quite capable of getting a husband. Oh, Mother! If only you'd tell the child's father. I won't. Independent. You're always so independent. You never let me dress you, not since you were three. Mother. You should have been born a boy, Melanie. The world would have been a much more peaceful place. I don't know why Mum had to tell you. It was just for a short time. 
Remember when you bought that sweet little puppy home? And we said you'd have to take care of it yourself? Well, I gave Spot his last meal, took him for his last walk this summer, and then he died at the age of 18. Which on the same principle would mean we could have Andrew on our hands until he's 120. Dad, I'm not a child anymore. Then stop acting like one. Your mother's a born martyr. I've given her orders to stop it. She's raised three children, and that's enough. Now, you wanted this child, you take care of it. I can't if I can't earn a living. And here's your grandson. Right. Grandson. I'll be delighted to see him as often as you care to visit. But on a full-time basis, no. He's your responsibility. Exaggerating small incidents. Marry me? I'd rather marry World War Two. <coughs> that was mine there. There's something I want you to see. I thought I'd keep this one for us, for when we're married. Oh, yes. Well, that is my son you've got there. Really? Well, you only have to look at him, Melanie. A lot of men have fair hair, Peter. I know he's my son. Look, we've been right through all this. And you have never given me a straight answer. I want you and I want my son. No. You solve everything with your fists, and sooner or later you'd use them on me, Peter. No. I love you. When I marry, I will not have fear in the contract. When you marry, you will marry me or no one. Me and you and our son. Or no. Uh, you've got children of your own. Have you looked after young babies before? Do you speak English? I will take him back to my place and bring him up just like one of my own. Ah, uh, that wasn't what I asked for in the advertisement. Well, we can't have everything we ask for, can we, dear? Now, as far as money goes... I have my own. And they're off my hands now, of course. Just the two grandchildren. But I never see them now, except on the weekend. And even then they seem to be drifting. You know how it is with families now. Not the same sort of feeling there was in my young day. So you feel you could cope? Beg your pardon, dear? All right, Mrs. Milbank, let's try it. I haven't struck this man's work before. He gets them in on time. There are more brilliant people, but when dinner's got to be on the table, it'll get there. Did I just hear the national motto? I'd better check Mrs. Milbank's first day. Try to remember which ones we had out, will you? Mm. It's all a bad dream. I'll wake up in a minute. Well, yeah, don't get married every day, mate. Who could afford it? And if you need to check back with us, you've got the number. Yeah. Look at all this. I mean, who do the phrases think I am? A Nassus? Melanie, there are some things I want to talk through at lunch. You must be there. Melanie? Uh, I'll be right with you. She's got a baby at home with a new sitter. 
That's the subject for 30 pars plus pictures. Not a reason to be distracted from her job. Thanks, Linda. Where are we lunching? Coachman! Miss Hilton's secretary. Mrs. Hilton's secretary? Yes, that's right, Mrs. Hilton's secretary. Is the baby all right? Uh, of course the baby's all right, if he isn't awake from the doorbell. Is the telephone not working? Phone hasn't run all morning. Lucky kid. <laughs> uh, look, can we continue this discussion over dinner? I've got to go and fire some people. I don't enjoy it, you know. So, dinner? No, well, I've got a baby at home with a new sitter. Yes, it's her first day. Oh, bye, Mrs. Milbank. Oh, goodbye. Thanks. Thank you. Hi, Tiger. Who are you crying? Hey. about that. Hello, my darling. Just wondering how the sun and air was. Oh, Peter. No, I don't care where you're ringing from. You're not coming round. No, no way. Uh, darling, the night I want to come around, really come around, I will. And that's the night you spent in jail, Buster. Good evening. Can I come in? No. I just want to talk. Peter, I'm tired. I'm going to bed. Well, we'll talk wherever you like. Good night. Keep me out, Melanie. Get used to the idea. You look after my son now. You hear?
Check. You'll have to bring that top light down a touch. That food looks very dead. Sorry, Hilda. As often as I've seen this. Uh, have you fixed the cake, Hilda? Linda collected it this morning. Good. It's just a nightmare. One night I spent with a guy and he's got this fixed idea that Andrew's his son. Is he? Yes. Peter's such bad news. If I married him, I couldn't have an opinion of my own. I, I couldn't make a decision. It'll always come down to the knuckle. And he's out there, just keeps showing up like some sort of nightmare. Well, you've got a peephole in the door. Use it. If I'm so dumb, why aren't you the editor? I don't, don't answer that. Thanks for these sessions, Linda. If you ever get married and leave me, I'm finished. My boyfriend and I are just good friends. Come on, we've got to say goodbye to Helen. You've only been back a week, but this is soft. The impart is badly laid out. And worst of all, I have an unhappy suspicion that it was done for the convenience of the staff not to win readers. Can we continue this discussion in my office? It's just a question of broadening the appeal. Shut the door. We've got the old and middle aged, we need the young. You shut the door! Can I sit down? Don't tell me my business in front of my staff. Sorry. All right, genius. Show me this bad layout. Take this home to Frank so he'll believe it. These haven't been to Syria yet. No? I want to remake them. Oh. The assistant to Mr. Doherty. Give you a hand. Admit it. I'm brilliant at layout. I had it all fixed. You hungry? I keep telling you, no. Miss Hilton, uh, Mrs. Milbank on the line. I'm putting you through now, Mrs. Milbank. Yes, well, I wouldn't mind you being late, but I promised my daughter. Any other calls? What are you still doing here? Covering. I'm meeting my boyfriend at seven. Mrs. Milbank, a conference ran over time. Oh, it's all right. Your ex-husband is here, playing with the little fellow. <laughs> Conned your way in here, and I can get right out. Conned? Saying you're my ex-husband. But Mrs. Milbank comes from a shockable generation. Out. But we get on like a house on fire. Out! Me and Mrs. Milbank, and little Andy. I'm taking Andrew to bed, and I want you out of here by the time I get back. You go to sleep, baby. 
I want you out of here. Did he say Daddy? I tried to teach him. You're despicable. You're not staying. Well, I'm too big to shift. I'll call the police. You wouldn't. Shouldn't leave your door open in the big city. Goodbye, Peter. Thanks for dropping in. I've got some work to do now. I'll see you soon. I'm going to be rather busy. Interrupt anything? No. no. Feel up to talk about these changes. Rather I do card tricks. Tell a few lies about when I was a foreign correspondent. And my unwelcome visitor left something. Pity to waste it. Did I ever tell you about the time I scooped the world with the soybean story? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, isn't it? Hi, good morning. It suits you. What? Happiness, warmth, smiling. Goes with you like fried eggs and apple sauce. Now the bad news. Doherty wants a slip-in supplement aimed at the young market. He needs to see our plans this time tomorrow. I've got a magazine to get out this week. So what are assistant editors for? been reading the glossies. He thinks the public may be ready for spice, as long as it's done with taste. The boss once felt my bottom in the elevator. You too, huh? The point is, will it cut into the readership we've already got? I keep saying that. Just a thought I had. Watch it. Mr. Doherty, one day I'm going to kill you. Keep on thinking that. It's the only thing that keeps this place running. It's not my taste, but try it. Now, I want to talk to you about staff cuts on the provincial dailies. The babysitter sick and Linda went over to cover and the father of the printer's chapel is called a stop work meeting. Look, Melanie, it's okay by me. And I figured I was more expendable than you were. Yes, right. Bye-bye. Who's a nice little fellow? <laughs> I forgot. Someone called Peter phoned. Beautiful boy. Said you'd know. Uh, the printer's chapel has called a stop work meeting. I assume they strike today. Management solves it by tomorrow. What's our page situation? If it lasts an hour, we're okay. If it lasts a day, we're history. Situation normal, you mean? Hmm.
Woman wise. <laughs> Linda, if you're going to ring yourself up, at least you could be here to answer. You there, Melanie? No, you're through to the Marie Celeste. Okay, I'll tell it. Yep. Mr. Denning? Linda says, could you pick up a bottle of red wine on your way home? Really? Well, I don't know. I just wish I had one at home myself. Could you follow through on that dummy by yourself for a day or so? Well, if the printers let me. Dodie says I've got to cut some fat out of the provincial dailies. The only fat in that section happens to be three guys I used to work with. Sorry about this. Oh, that smells brilliant. Ready any time? Hmm. Twenty minutes, hurt it? No. And how's the sun and air? Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Thanks. Or would you like to? Ian? Who shall I say? Surprise. Uh, it's all right, Linda. It's a habit with him. The last time I saw this gesture was in a Sinbad movie. I was ten years old. Excuse me? Uh, there's no need... To what do I owe, etc.? I thought I'd take you to lunch. I'm rather busy. But that's what you said the last time. It's still true. I have the use of a boat for the weekend. A client that owes me something. No. I'm trying to be polite, Melanie. So am I. I'm going to get my way eventually. Why not now? I told Noel it's clear again. Uh, he said he'd be back in five minutes. Bookends? Marry me. No. Come to lunch then. All oh, right. Why not? Why not what? Marry me. Are you serious? Of course I'm serious. I am not serious. That proves you're not serious. I'm very, very serious. <laughs> I've had it up to here being Dodie's hatchet man. Why don't we get married? Both go freelance. You could see more of your kid, and I could write a book called The Pad and Trench Coat Through Darkest USA. You're serious? I'm serious. 
Literally, this is so sudden. So what? Well, I don't know anything about you. I'm 35. I was born here in Sydney and like that. 35 and never been married. What's wrong with you? I was married once. The sort of man that can't stay married. I, I don't know anything about you. I could show you my passport. My mother kept a clipping school. Starts with the shipping column, arrivals, departure. Oh, no. Don't say no, just think about it. Uh, no calls, Linda. Right, Dorothy wants young woman wise as a once a month supplement. Uh, then, if reader reaction turns out all right, we say, owing to overwhelming reader response and integrate it. Right? Uh, what have we got? Theme is? Blaze away. Well, if you can think of something better, tell me. Oh, blaze away it is. <laughs> Colour theme, burnt orange, gold, fashion autumnal. Now, what kind of copy can we expect on that? Julie's got some copy that would never run usually. Doherty wants conservative spice. Mm. Where does Doherty get these crummy ideas? Uh, the boss. Conservative spice it is. is. Any fiction that might fit in. Do they read fiction? Ask Julie, get her in. Julie! I said no calls. Oh, okay. Sorry. And I had the pain again this morning. And I have to see Dr. McDonald tonight. And uh, I just thought I should warn you. Yes, right. Thanks, Mrs. Moorbank. Oh, uh, where, where were we? Do young women read fiction? Uh, what I do? I don't know. I didn't understand young women when I was a young man. What chance have I got now? I think it stinks. I think it's patronizing. Oh, charming. And what would you know about women's magazines anyway? I know this hasn't been researched. I know it's the product of an office conference. Well, Stop it! You... The debating club is now adjourned. When you two can agree, come back to me. Can we have another week, then? The deadline remains as is. Apart from all that, marry me? I'll kill you first. And then you'll marry me? Great. Mrs. Milbank has to go to hospital. She's hanging on till I get there. I started my annual leave 15 minutes ago. Personnel's been informed and another girl's on her way. Uh, Linda, I, I can't let you do that. I just did it. Why am I surrounded by domineering, pig-headed people? It's a gift. Oh, what am I going to do? Linda's covering. Oh, come on. You're going to marry me and see lots of your child. And we're going to freelance around and do articles on the Greek islands, the Trans-Siberian Railway in Polynesia. And in the meantime, we're going to get this job done. Okay, tell me where it stinks. Uh, I'm in conference. Can I call you back? I have here the combined wisdom of two research organizations. Yep, right. They tell us why the glossies are selling. No, we can't go into that near porn area. Personnel, Melanie Hilton. Where is that replacement girl? Are we going on that dummy? Just trying to keep the firm solvent, ladies. They're yeah, good. Need me? When we've cleared the debris. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, could you ask Julie to man the switch until the new girl comes? Sure. What's it trying to tell me, Noel? Hello? Look, can I call you back? It's trying to tell you that Linda ought to be at her desk. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. I'm all yours. You mean that? Let's go, girls. Spin. Good one. More. Good one.
What's that? Dinner. No, it's been a long day. I'm due at home. Linda's at home and the deadline still as is. Would you mind if I phone home and say good night to my son? What am I, a monster? Mm-hmm. Yes, here he is. Look, that's Mummy on the phone. It's Mummy, if you can hear him. Good night, darling. Mwah. Mummy will see you in the morning. <laughs> okay, Linda. <laughs> Bye. Linda said he smiled. I love you. It's been a long day and the deadline still as is. Oh. They're garbage enriched for added malnutrition. Why don't you sit down and put your feet up? Rubbish, I bet. Mm. I could do you an omelette like that. How's it going? Oh, we're getting there. Agreed on the theme, know what we want. Know how big the holes are, you know, like that. How, how have you coped? It's beautiful. Oh, what'll I do, Linda? Find a new Mrs. Milbank, have her leave, then find another and another. You'll be going to school, and it's after school, three thirty until two. You had an emergency today. And they never happen, do they? Noel Denning wants me to marry him. Thinks we can both go freelance, make a team of it. Do you love him? He's a nice guy. I don't know. What do I do? You'll do what you have to do. What the hell is that supposed to mean? You sound just like my mother. She's always saying things like that to Dad. Fine, Harry. Melanie, I have a thirst on me. <laughs> Ever worked freelance, Harry? Mm-hmm. What's it like? Something like it outside. Something like it in. A beer, thanks, Merv. And you like it in? Mm. <coughs> In's warmer. Depends what you want. If it's another change, Noel. I thought you might like to lift home. Oh, fine. I, I left the car with Lynn. You said. Just a second. You're by.
you to invite me up? I think it's an early night. been sniffing around Melanie. I don't know you. Me? I'm the man that's going to marry her. I don't think so. You don't. You will. <laughs> They were fighting over you. Peter's not here and Noel's unconscious, but I think so. Beautiful. Oh, it's just beautiful, Melanie. Makes you feel good, does it? All right. You know how much I depend on that young man. I'm sorry to upset your schedule, Mr. Doherty. Don't get smart with me. He's going to hospital. This is a place of business. You are an editor. That is a senior executive. You are responsible for what happened in your office today. However, I am responsible for appointing you in the first place, and if necessary, I will carry that can to the boss. Our attorneys will prepare an application to the courts for a restraining order on this man. You will sign this order. Agreed? Any further intrusion of your private life into this building and you will be out. And if I am feeling very charitable, I will not blacklist you with every other management in this country, but I can't promise that. Understood? 
Thank you, Mr. Doherty. me, darling? If you contact me, ring me up, speak to me, or look at me sideways in the street, I'll slap a court order on you so fast, Buster. Hey, Melanie, come on up. Just stay away! I can't say I care much for your boyfriend. Now that is Doherty. He's had a restraining order slapped on him. What on earth did you say to him? He wasn't going to marry you. Well, that's true. Good. Do you want the police to charge him? I can give you his name and address. Do you want me to? Have him charged? Hang him or leave him alone. I don't care either way. That's good. If you wanted him charged, I would have worried. That you cared enough to bother. The hospital certainly makes us subtle, doesn't it? <laughs> You are going to marry me. I fought for you, didn't I? But you lost. Only the battle. Marry me. Why not? <clears throat> Easy. You will be gentle. Like I said, people's private lives. So buy me. But if you breed, I'll want the training of the pups. The deadline still remains as is. A woman's place is in the office. Well, in my young days, a newspaper man could look after himself. You ought to see the other guy. Not a mark on him. <laughs> I brought a bottle. Got a couple of glasses. <laughs> You're spoiling me. Everyone needs spoiling. I don't know how I'm going to pay you back. Losing your holidays. Uh, Noel and I... We're getting married. Oh. Aren't you going to congratulate me? Uh, congratulations. Uh, Andrew was beautiful today. He really is starting to talk. What are you saying? Stop the presses. Remake page one. So far, he's managed Tedder. As in Bear, right? Right. And Nunu. Nunu, <laughs> is that a word? No, no, it means bottle. Well, you see, when I put him down at night with his last bottle, I, uh, I say, nine, nine, and um, he has this idea it means bottle. So when he wants his bottle, he asks, no, no. Right. Well, I've got a girl in the typing pool who can't spell English, so... Well, so why not a son? Exactly. <laughs> mm. I suppose you'd be looking for someone to look after Andrew. Oh, well, uh, when Noel asked me to marry him, the theory was we'd both go freelance, and uh, so I I'd be at home. Oh, well, that's great. You'll be seeing him all day. Andrew. Yes, yes, it's great. Uh, you won't be missing the office. Who needs all that hassle? Right. I I'll just get this new supplement off the ground, and... Uh, Ladies, I am very happy. Yeah, but is the X-Man going to like it? If he doesn't, I'll beat him up again.
not a bad read. If you like that sort of thing. When did they spring you? 38 minutes ago. Uh, Doherty says the next time I let my private life into the office, I'm fired. Mr. Doherty! What? Well, the supplements work well. Just have to blend it with the rest. It'll be a good trick. Well, your successor can do that. I've, I've been, been thi thinking... <laughs> <laughs> Ladies first. No, no, you. Well, I've been thinking. Freelance market. It's very hard. It's all right for a single man, but precarious. Doherty pays me a lot of money. So, why don't I stay on? You establish yourself freelance, and then I'll come out when the time's ripe. You stay on here working. But you hate your job. Not all of it. You hate firing people, being the axe man. Well, I love my job, every bit of it. Go on. Well, I was thinking, if you went freelance and I stayed on. And the baby, Andrew? All he needs is lunch and putting down in the afternoon. But it'll give you a chance to establish yourself, write a book. Who needs that sort of chance? It's what you're offering me, isn't it? Melanie, there are two sexes, men and women. Yes, no. Well. Well, you're saying that you'll stay on here doing the thing that you hate while you rob me of the thing I love. That isn't it. Isn't it? You don't need a husband. You need a wife. Get out of here. Go on, get out. Why don't you get back with the animal who beat me up? You're made for each other. Killers. Noel Denning says he can't work with you anymore. He's right. I thought you two were close. Not anymore. I told you about your private life. Yes. Girl, if this had happened a week ago, you would have been out. No more trouble from your ex-friend. The preliminary figures are very satisfying. Boss says congratulations. Well, in fact, what he said was we can't maintain backup advertising at the present level for the rag, but um, congratulations. Figures are good. It was a joint effort, right? Hmm. Think you can carry through on your own? Yes. Yes. All right. But if you can't, you're finished. Sorry about you and Noel. Me too. a new Mrs. Milbank, have her leave, get another and another. You'll do what you have to do. What the hell is that supposed to mean? I put an advertisement in the paper today for another Mrs. Milbank. I could do a rough sitting of them for you if you like. Eliminate all but three, say? Oh. Melanie Hilton. She's got it made. Top of the tree at 30. I need so much on top, I can have a child on my side. I love that business. And I love that job. No, it's just something to support that little bit of flesh in there. Work used to be 
the most important thing. Now it's just something I have to do to support the most important thing. And I mustn't hate him for it. Don't. Don't. Good to be alive. and oh, he would have paid to have seen that. And I love Andrew. I, I want to live here and look after both of you. Look after you and look after Andrew. I don't want anything else. Just to be here. We, we know each other better, better than any man will ever know. Bye. 
by day, finding that there's time to play. Suddenly, I found a way it's not like me at all. It's simply not like me at all.